A few words come to my mind about Palmyra. Diverse, beautiful, city, trade, and influential. Unfortunately, it is not safe to visit them due to ISIS remnants. However, I will focus on Palmyra in the 2nd century AD. What was it like? How did it contribute to the Roman military? What was its economy? What contributions did the emperors bring? Find out today on Roman history. Before going into the video, I want to express my intentions. To me, running a history channel has not always been easy. I want to prove to my family, mainly my mother, who is stuck to the Asian stereotype, be a doctor, lawyer, or engineer. However, my passion is in history. This is why I do it. I want to prove my family wrong. Anyway, enjoy the video on the 2nd century Palmyra. Urban Rural Divide Palmyra was an oasis city in Roman Syria. During the 2nd century, Palmyra became more urban but still had its rural elements. Simply, it was a dichotomy of the urban-rural divide. Landowning nobility had the power, but its wealth could not concentrate on the oasis alone. The answer was trade, mainly through caravans. Economy Palmyra's economy was diverse and complex, but trade was the main driving force. Nevertheless, there are two misconceptions. One was the conquest of the Nabataean kingdom in 106 under Trajan, which allowed Palmyra to become the main trading center in the Roman East and increased commerce. Bostra was the capital city of the Nabataeans, but it was not the only trading center, Alexandria and Antioch were also significant. It was more likely the Palmyrenes used caravan trades to cross into Parthian territory, which was more impactful. Although the annexation might have had an effect, it was minimal due to affecting more of Arabia. The second was the oasis providing a significant source of revenue due to its proximity. Possibly, it could bring some economic impact, but trade was the higher priority. Nonetheless, it was essential in the agricultural sector. As for the Roman Parthian conflicts, they disrupted trade but could recover after a war. For example, Hadrian made peace with the Parthians, which helped Palmyra to resume its trade with Persia in what we now call the Silk Road. Further evidence was the inscriptions of the caravans in 131. Non-traders went through the Euphrates at Zeugma and passes through Mesopotamia to the head of the Gulf, Young 124. However, once, Greek traders from Seleucia used it. Finally, the Synodiarch, the caravan leader, led and protected the caravan from danger. Palmyra contributed. Slaves, salt, dried foods, purple cloth, perfumes, prostitutes, from an inscription on a steel of AD 137, silk, jade, muslin, spices, ebony, incense, ivory, precious stones, and glass, Bryce 279. In the mid-2nd century, trade was at its zenith. In 199, trade caravans had protection due to banditry. On the agricultural front, like trade, grazing rights were integral to Palmyra's economy. Slaughtered animals were not part of the foodstuff, villagers produced dairy products. Pastoralism was the main drive of rural life. Possibly, there were olives, but droughts discouraged their cultivation. In 137, Hadrian enacted a tariff law, which combined the old from Germanicus and the new. However, the imperial government used price controls to set prices. Military Palmyra had its separate military, but Rome could rely on it sometimes. The Palmyrenes would protect their trade caravans from desert bandits. Also, it served as a strategic location to watch Parthian activities. During Trajan's preparation for his war against Parthia, he raised the Alla 1 Ulpia Dromedarium Palmyrenorum an auxiliary camel wing from Palmyra, and the former legionary protectors, Legio X Fratensis. Also, Hadrian assigned a Palmyrene unit in Dacia, the Roman government gave an auxiliary army in the mid-2nd century. In addition, in Lucius Verus' Parthian campaign, he used Palmyrene archers, 
who used their composite bows and guarded the Euphrates' right bank in Parthian territory after Rome's advance in 164. The recruits came from Palmyra and the surrounding region. A strategos or general in Greek led them and was the most known presence. For example, in the Mithraic relief of 169, Atpanai was a strategos toxiton, archery general. In 170 or 171, Zenobios held the same position as Atpanai. In 198, based on the inscription rite of the Temple of Bel, another one was Elias Bora, who made peace. The main external threat was an Arab tribal confederation, the Banu Tanakh, Parthia was not a frequent concern. Hadrian established two boundary markers. One was at Kerbet el Bailas, northwest of Palmyra. The second was at Khazar al Hair al Garbai, southeast of Palmyra. Public Works During the first half of the second century, Palmyra's public works flourished and met its zenith. In 132, there was the Temple of Balshaman's inner area. Also, the construction of the Roman theater and simultaneously the temples of Nebu and Alat worked on. Additionally, there was the Great Colonnade construction. In 139, a wealthy Palmyrene merchant and patron, Male Agrippa, funded the reconstruction of the Temple of Bel. The urban development also reached its apex during the same period. During the second half of the same century, the projects concluded. The Palmarines completed the baths of Aglabal and Malabal, honoring the gods. The same went for the Great Colonnade with the addition of the Tetrapylon, cubic monument, and the construction of the monumental Arch of Palmyra during Septimiu Severus' reign. The Temple of Bel likely finished in 175. The temples were for the gods and goddesses worshipped in Palmyra, which was a common theme of study. Society In 129, Male Agrippa changed the city's name to Hadriana Palmyra, honoring Emperor Hadrian for his visit. Also, the Palmarines expressed themselves as citizens, which gave respect to neighboring kingdoms like the Mycene. According to the inscription from 131, their traders acknowledged Yarhai, the patron and son of a Palmarine citizen. Fifteen years later, citizenship became more integral. Citizens met possibly in the Temple of Bel or a theater, and there were four tribes, one unknown, two from the west the Bene Mazen and Bene Matabol, and the Bene Komare or Kohenite. The Bene Komare worshipped Aglabal and Malabal as cults. Religion, especially cultism, was another essential theme to understanding Palmyra. The leading citizens, the tribal leaders, and urban elite, Smith II 126, formed the city council to make laws, and the ordinary citizens had an assembly to pass them. The proedros, or the president, led the city council. Also, the secretary and the agoronomos, the market chief on exchanging goods, were two additional authorities. Two examples of secretaries were Male Agrippa and Alexandros. Finally, the Palmarines erected statues as symbols of a leader's altruism to Palmyra, and citizens earned honors. Septimius Apseos, Gaius Julius Hieran, and a Roman prefectus, a magistrate or a high-ranking official. In short, the Palmarine government took the Greek model of governance, which focused on the polis, city. Also, democracy existed. The final point was the change of status for Palmyra. Thanks to Hadrian, Palmyra became a civitas libera, a free city to perform self-governance. Also, he restored its semi-autonomy, but it still served Rome as an ally. As a result, it was part of the long trend to become more Romanized. Conclusion Concisely, Palmyra thrived economically, politically, and religiously. Also, public works reached its peak. Thank you for watching, and please like, comment, subscribe, and enable notifications to see more of my videos.